Hello, welcome to the Maya Tool Belt. This is Michael. In this video, we're going to talk about the Rotate Tool. Now, previously I had created a video tutorial going over the Rotate Tool, which is a pretty basic tool in Maya that you can find in your toolbar on just rotating an object. Uh, and I did a tutorial on the Rotate Tool by request a while back. And so I was going to look at the 2016 version of the Rotate Tool and make an addendum video. However, when I looked at the options, they're almost completely different. I mean, there's so much different stuff in here. There's so much new stuff in here. And I think I'm just going to make a new Rotate Tool tutorial just straight up, just start from scratch. So even though the Rotate Tool is basically just rotating an object, you can see there's lots of different settings and options in here that we can look at. So first, let's get an object to rotate. I'm going to go to Create, Polygon Primitives, and I'll just use a sphere for now. So I have my Rotate Tool active, which is the E key. E is the shortcut key for activating Rotate. And let me uh, scale down my sphere so you can see my Rotate handle better, and I'll hide the grid for now. So the Rotate handle is composed of these different colored rings. You have red for x-axis, blue for z-axis, green for y-axis. And then you have this outer circle that you can that is always camera aligned. So no matter where I rotate my camera, this outer yellow ring is always aligned with the camera. So if I want to rotate something along with along the camera's perspective axis like this, I can do that. So you can rotate x axis, z, y, and then the camera. And that's the basics of how Rotate Tool works, and that's generally how you use Rotate Tool. However, there are all these different settings in here that we're going to look at. So first I'm going to click Reset Tool, so we have our default settings. And then let's go to the first one, and we're just looking at Rotate Settings, by the way. There's also Common Selection Options and Soft Selection. Those are kind of video topics on their own, and all tools, like a Move Tool and a Scale Tool, also have these sections within them. So we're just looking at the Rotate Tool specific settings that you can find here. So first you have Axis Orientation. Now this is a little bit different than before, but it's got a lot of similar set uh, options. It used to be you had these little radial buttons that you would click on whether to change from Object Mode to World Mode to Component Mode and so forth. But now it's a drop-down menu, so I can click and change to World Mode or to Object Mode. The reason why that would be important Right now my sphere is oriented with the world, so even its object mode orientation is along the same axis as the world, so there's no change. But if I were to rotate the object like this, you can see how my rotate tool has rotated along with the object, and that's because my axis orientation is object mode. If I now were to change the object mode to world mode, you can see how my rotate tool axis orients itself to the world and not to how the object has been rotated. And I can go back just by drop, clicking on the drop down arrow to select the object. I can also middle click on this arrow and it switches between the last two orientations used. So just by middle clicking this I switch from object to, to world and back. If I went to component mode and then middle click, it will go from object to component and back. As you might expect, the component axis orientation is primarily for rotating components. And a component of this object here would be, for example, faces, vertices, or edges. So I'm going to right click on the sphere and choose vertex. And I'll select some vertices with component mode as my axis orientation. So you can see how my axis, my rotate tool axis, has oriented itself based on the selection I have, if I were to choose a different set of vertices to see how the orientation changes based on my selection and where it is and how many there are, it kind of averages itself based on the normals of those points that I'm selecting. If I choose this one point, it orients itself pointing out of, from the surface along the normal. If I just choose one point, that's what it does. If I choose multiple points, it chooses an average based on all the points selected. See, if I go back to object mode, 
so that the orientation of the rotate tool doesn't change when I select my different components. It's just oriented with the object's orientation. Same for world. If I choose world, it or the rotate tool orients itself to the world, not to the object, nor to the components. So world, object, and component, I think, are the probably the more likely or axis orientations you'll choose on day-to-day -day work with Maya. But there are these two options down here also. There's gimbal and custom. With the gimbal axis orientation, you can see that I get some interesting results of my rotate tool. So you can see my X handle is a little bit offset from the rest of the tool. But essentially with the gimbal tool, you can rotate in one axis direction only. Let's go back to object mode to make this a bit easier to see. So if I rotate in the Y axis, you'll see how the X axis handle will rotate along with the Y. If I rotate the X axis stays still. Z-axis kind of rotates them all in this way. But if you look over here in the channel box, when I'm rotating these handles, rotate X and Z, let's actually zero this back out. So rotate X, Y, and Z are all zero now. So when I rotate on the red X-axis handle, you'll see only the red rotate X channel change. Same with the other handles, only though their respective channels will change whenever I rotate them. Let's change to object mode, and I'll just rotate the object just to get a different look to it. So you'll see here as I'm rotating this, this object, this sphere, in object axis orientation, when I, ro when I rotate the Y axis handle, if you look in the channel box, you'll see that rotate X, Y, and Z are all changing. And that's still just rotating the Y axis handle. If I rotate the X axis handle, in this particular case, that only changes the rotate X channel. But when I rotate the Z axis handle, it changes all the rotation channels as well. So now if I switch to gimbal and rotate on that Y axis handle, only the rotate Y channel changes. Or X, only the rotate X channel changes. Or Z, only the rotate Z channel changes. So if you're getting the results where you're in object mode or something and you're rotating one of these handles and all three rotation axes are changing and you don't want them to, you can use the gimbal axis orientation to kind of lock the other two channels in place. And then you have custom. With a custom axis orientation you can use these values here. Let's see if I change this to say 10. You see how it rotates the handle of the rotate tool but does not actually rotate the object. I'm just kind of typing in some random numbers right now just to get some changes to happen on the tool itself. So you can see that it changes the orientation of the tool without changing the object and then you can adjust the object from that point in your scene using the rotate tools new custom orientation. Next to the X, Y, and Z input options here you have this little arrow that you can click and say set to component, point, edge, face, or reset. I click reset, it zeroes everything out to its default positions. And this is supposed to be in a custom axis orientation where this has effect, by the way. So I'm on a custom axis orientation, and I click reset, it zeroes this back out. Now you can choose set to component, point, edge, or face. So if I say set to component, you'll see here I get this message that says select components to orient the rotate tool. So I can select a point, an edge, a face, and I can zoom in here. So you see when I mouse over any of these components, they light up. So if I choose the pole vertex, for example, click in, then the rotate tool's axis will orient itself along with that point's normal direction. If I go back to set to component and choose, for example, this face here, it orients itself to the normal direction of that face. You can also choose to differentiate between the components. If it's difficult to select the right one that you're looking for, you can say, instead of set to component, which lets you choose a point, an edge, or a face, you can choose one in particular. So if you want to choose a particular point, you don't want to select an edge or face, you can choose set to point, and then only points are available to select. 
click one and orients to that point. Same with the others, you have set to edge or face. So you can choose one of the three components individually to set the axis orientation to, or you can say set to component and allows you to choose one of the three with one click. Or hit reset and zero everything back out. All right, next we have pivot, and we have these buttons. Right next to it is edit, pivot, and then reset. And these checkboxes below here also that are within this uh, kind of sectioned off uh, area of the settings window, these all deal with the pivot. So when I click edit pivot, I go into edit pivot mode, and I have my handle here. I can move my pivot around and change its position. And then when I exit pivot mode, you see now my pivot point has been moved over here. I can undo that. If I toggle the D key, I get the same result of editing pivot mode. So pressing D on and off will turn edit pivot mode on and off. And after changing the position of the pivot, you can click this reset button to reset it back to its default position, which is the center of the object. So with edit pivot turned on, I have these check boxes here. This one is position. And it's checked on by default, and this will snap the pivot position to a selected component. And then we have orientation, which will snap the pivot orientation to a selected component. So both of these are checked on by default. So when I click on edit pivot, you know I have my movement handles here. I also have the rotation handles. I can rotate the pivot as well. But if you see when I mouse over a, I'll zoom in here an edge or a point or a face it highlights and you'll see the word align appear below my below my cursor so whenever I click one of these faces for example if I click that face the pivot will then snap to and align both position and orientation to that face you'll see now the, the red uh, x-axis move handle is pointing as if it's a normal direction of that face if I chose a different face the x-axis handle will choose this direction as if projecting out from the face's center. So you can choose edges or points and the position of the pivot point will change with the position checkbox as well as the orientation of the pivot will change with the orientation checkbox. Both of these checkboxes turned on. Now if I turn off position you'll see now instead of saying align it says orient. So if I choose this face, for example, the position of my pivot did not change, but the orientation changed to be oriented with this face. Let me turn position back on and choose that face, and then the position of the pivot changes. And you see my, the word I'm given is a line again. If I turn off orientation, you see now I have POS, or position, being the word that is associated with my command. So the aligning of the orientation will not change. The directions that these arrows are pointing will not change, but the position of the pivot will change to align with the uh, component that I mouse, uh, that I highlight. So position and orientation are checked on by default. So you can choose a component of your object and align your pivot to that component. So for example, the pole I can align to that point. And then when you're done editing the, the pivot, you can either press D or click the Edit Pivot button again to kind of turn it off. And now your pivot point is where you have it placed. While we're looking at the Edit Pivot mode, so right now I'm in Edit, edit Pivot mode. It's turned on. And I have both position and orientation checked. So whenever I can mouse over a component, it will align. I, there are a couple hotkeys you can use to change this without having to go into the options and turn on or off these checkboxes. Hold down the shift key, you can see that the word align changes to position, meaning that holding down shift while I have edit pivot mode turned on turns off orientation aligning and only it will align the, pip, the position. So when I hold shift and click, it will change the position of the pivot without changing the orientation. If I let go of shift and then choose a face, it will change both. 
to hold down control, you see it changes from position or align to orient, which is the same as not changing the position, but will change the orientation. You see here that the position of my pivot is not changing when I click while I have control held down. Let me click reset, reset my tool back to its original position. So let's select an axis. So you see here when I choose one of these axis handles on my tool, they highlight yellow. So for example, the blue Z axis handle is, is blue, but when I click it and select it, it turns yellow. So that tells you which handle is currently highlighted or selected. So now when I hold shift, you'll see that the position changes to, say, position Z. If I choose the yellow axis handle and hold shift, it says position Y. So with the axis handle selected and I hold shift, you can, say it's, you can see that it's constraining the position to a certain axis, so in this case, Y direction, which would be like this meaning that it won't move in the z-axis or x-axis when I choose a component to align to. So hold down shift and choose for example this point. The y-axis shifted to align to that, that point's y-axis direction or y-axis position but the pivot did not change position to be at that point. It just aligned to that point's y position. If I select the red x-axis handle and choose that same point or I think it's the same point but anyway the x-axis handle will move to that position to align with it and because it's kind of aligned like it is it snapped to it. If I choose a different component hold shift and choose this point over here it just moves down to be aligned in the x-axis direction with that component's position. So you can kind of constrain axes by selecting them and holding shift and choosing a position. Click reset here to go back to the center of the object. So then you have pin component pivot. So you lock the component pivot to prevent it from resetting on selection changes. I have a face selected okay, and I choose edit pivot so I'm editing the pivot of that face like so and I choose pin component pivot so let me so right now pin component pivot is turned off. If I move the component pivot point up here for example and choose pin and then turn off edit pivot mode so now my component is up here in the air and I choose a different face you'll see my component pivot does not change. It stays where it is because the component pivot has been pinned to this position. So even though I change my selection of components the pivot point does not change because it has been pinned by this checkbox here. If I uncheck it, now when I select different components, the pivot point will change position like is expected. So that's how pin component pivot works.